At Xerox Park, the people involved with um, building the Alto and building the Alto software often talked about the Alto as a time machine, not in the sense of something from the past that has come to the present, but in the sense that they were building in their present, the early 1970s, a computer that they thought would become much more economically and technologically practical 10 years in the future. So they were building then the computer of tomorrow. So for now, from the perspective of 40 years on, the Alto is yesterday's computer of tomorrow that we have restored for us to benefit from exploring in our today. The Alto project started in March of 2017. The restoration took about eight months of very dedicated work on software curator Al Caso's time. Basically, the, the electronics are you know, relatively modern, 1970s uh, integrated circuits. So the boards themselves uh, mostly work. The restoration of two Altos began as part of the Center for Software History's Alto System Project. The problem for Al was not getting the machines actually running, but really making sure all the peripherals were connected and operational and all the components didn't give out on him unexpectedly. With the network, I just tried booting over the network and it came right up, but it wouldn't boot off the disk drive. It just didn't make sense why you could transmit between the two machines and only in one direction to the other one. So I kept thinking, you know, is, is it the cabling? Is it, is it the interface cards? And, but yeah, it turned out that it was actually a problem with the, with the modern card. It's no doubt that Al's eight-month quest to restore these cool machines has been challenging. There's a paper cylinder that's supposed to be there and it actually burned up. So one of the most important players in this besides Al was volunteer Paul McJones. All I needed to do was to go back to the backup tape format from 40 years ago and write a program to convert them into modern files and directories and web pages and open files that are source code or um, word processor files for Bravo, which was the first WYSIWYG text editor, and that's what I did. It's really just fascinating to see how intricate and involved and dedicated everybody was on the project.